Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave, and I'm excited to be starting this Node.js tutorial series. In this series, we'll learn all about Node.js, and eventually we'll use something like the Express Framework and possibly even MongoDB as a database to complete what would be the MERN stack if we added in React on the front end. But we'll start out focusing on Node.js. And here we can see Node.js is a JavaScript runtime. It's not a new language. It's not a different language. It's a JavaScript runtime, and it's built on Chrome's V8 JavaScript engine. It's not a framework or a library either, but it does run on the server, and that's what makes it different. We're used to JavaScript running in the browser where the HTML and CSS is, and that's all on the front end, but Node.js is on the back end. So you'll want to go to nodejs.org if you haven't already download, no, downloaded Node.js, and you'll want to download the recommended for most users version is fine, or if you want to get the one with the latest features, either way, download Node.js, and you probably already have it or are familiar with it, but if you're not, I just want to mention, I will be using Visual Studio Code, and you can download that code editor. You can also use others that you're familiar with. However, my examples will be with Visual Studio Code, and you can get that for free at code.visualstudio.com. Okay, with Node.js and Visual Studio Code both downloaded and installed, let's get started. Okay, I've got Visual Studio Code open, and you can see I have created a new folder just for this tutorial called 01tut. You can create a folder and name it whatever you want to, but open that folder up in Visual Studio Code, and then go ahead and create a new file named server.js. Now with that said, I want to mention you should already know some HTML, CSS, and JavaScript before this tutorial series. Possibly maybe some experience with other libraries and frameworks like React or Vue, but that's not necessary. But you will need the basics of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So while it is a Node.js beginners tutorial series, it's not an absolute beginners for web devs. If you haven't already learned HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, you should probably start there before attempting this series. And with that said, we need to focus on how Node.js differs from vanilla JS, just plain old JavaScript. First of all, and what will be the running theme throughout the differences, is that Node runs on a server not in the browser, and that is a big difference. So you're working on the back end, not the front end. We're not relating to the browser anymore. And because of that, the console is now in the terminal window. It's not in the console window of DevTools in the browser because we're not using the browser at all. Let's open a terminal window by going to the terminal menu and choosing new terminal in VS Code. And with the new terminal window open, we will be able to run Node right inside the terminal. So if I type Node, we're now running the console directly in the terminal. So if we can add in any actual JavaScript that would be an expression, such as 2 plus 2, and we get 4 in return. So this is just like the DevTools console, except we're now using the terminal for Node. And with that said, we can also exit by pressing Control C, and then it will tell us to press Control C one more time. And now we've exited Node. But what if we put a console statement in our file? So if I just put in, not condole, console, there we go, console log, and I put in your standard hello world and save, we can also run any JavaScript file from the terminal with Node. We'll just type Node, and then the name of the file. We don't need to put the JS extension after. I'll press Enter, and now we get Hello World in the terminal. Another difference between Node and vanilla JavaScript is that there is a global object instead of a window object. The window object, once again, referred to the browser, where we could do height and different properties like that. The global object is much smaller, but it does have some of the same properties we were used to seeing in the window object. So what I'm going to do is just say console.log, and I'll put global in here, because global is the keyword for the global object, and I'll save. 
And now we can run our file once again by typing node server in the terminal and it logged the full global object. I'll expand the terminal window up and scroll just so we can see this object here. So we have our hello world again. Then here's the global object and you can see there's a clear interval, clear timeout, set interval, set timeout. Those are things that we already had in vanilla JavaScript that we're used to. And it's a much smaller object than the window object if you were to go into a browser and to log that. But that is another difference in Node.js. A fourth difference in Node.js is that there are common core modules that we will explore and vanilla JavaScript doesn't really have those. These are modules that relate to the operating system, the file system, and other things that we can do on the server. And to import those common core modules, as well as any other modules, we use common JS modules, common JS imports, instead of ES6 imports. And now there is some work being done to use the same syntax that we typically use in vanilla JavaScript, that is such as import whatever name from whatever file. And that is how we do it in ES6. However, CommonJS uses a require statement. So let's go ahead and import something and we can learn how to do that with, so let's call this OS and set this equal to require.os. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It's just a different syntax than we're used to seeing with the import. And now that we've imported the OS, let's go ahead and get some information about the OS from it. So we can say os.type, and we'll go ahead and log that. And I'm going to copy this down a couple of times and change type to a couple of other values we can get about the OS, such as version and home directory, and that is abbreviated with home dir, you can see that. I'll comment out the global object log because it takes up a little more space. Let's go ahead and save this, and once again, call node server in the terminal. And here we get our hello world, and then you can see OS type delivers Windows NT, OS version is Windows 10 Pro, and then OS home directory shows my home directory in users slash Dave Gray. There are a couple of other values that we always have access to in Node. And let me type the first one out. It's dir name for directory name, and it starts with two underscores, and that will always give us the directory name in Node. And then the other one is two underscores and file name for the file name we're using. Here I can see I'm being inconsistent on the semicolon, so if anything, I'll just remove the one I typed. Let's go ahead and save that, and once again, call node server in the terminal. And here's what we get. After the home directory that was delivered from the OS common core module in our console log statement right here, you can see directory name, the value that we have. We don't even have to import a module to get that. Is this full length here? to my 01 tut directory. And then you can see file name gives that same full path, but also includes the file name at the end. There's another common core module that we can import, and I'll do that right now, and we'll call it path because it is called path as well. So there is path with the common JS import, and now we can use file name within path. So let me give some examples of that to get more values. Here we'll log the path directory name and pass in the file name and we'll see that it is very similar to what we just got by using the directory name here. However, if we're using path that might come in handy as well. There's also path.base name and we'll also pass in the file name there. And I'll copy this down one more time. And there we'll just change base name, and this will be extension name. And we'll go ahead and save that. Now let's run the file one more time with Node in the terminal and see what we got in return. So after our directory name and file name here, if I drag this up just a little, we can see it all. So we have the directory, that's the value before we used the path import, and here's the server file name before we used the path. 
Now the final three that we used with the path import, we got the same as we did above for the directory. So using the path directory name is the same as using this value in this instance. And then the base name was just server JS. So that allowed us to just pull the file name out instead of having everything included as the file name value does up here on line 22. And then the extension name gave us just the extension of the file, the .js. Now what I've found to be even more useful than any one of those individual values is to, whoa, I had my fingers on the wrong keys, console.log path dot parse and then pass in the file name and we'll see what we get in return once we call this one more time in the terminal node server and here we get an object with all of these values so we have the root the directory the base the extension and the file name itself. So we can really pull all of that together in any way we want to if we just go ahead and parse and then get each individual value as well. Now besides the common core modules, we can also pull in packages that other developers have created and some of you may be familiar with Node Package Manager already and I will cover that in some detail in the near future. But we can also create our own modules and so we have a couple of imports here. We'll make room to import one more. But first in the file tree, let's create another file and I'll just call this math.js. Inside of math.js, I'm going to create some functions. I'll call the first one add and set it equal to a anonymous function. It's an arrow function really. And from there, it'll just be a plus b, which would return the sum of the two parameters a and b. Now I'm going to copy this down three times and we can just change these. So here we'll have subtract. They'll all have the two parameters a and b. We can also have multiply and we can have divide. So instead of a plus b, of course it would be a minus b, a times b, and a divided by b. Right now though, we, while we have these four functions, we have not exported them in any way. So we can have a statement at the bottom that says module.exports and then we can set that equal to an object and we can pass in the names of all the functions. There is another way to do this that I'll show you right afterwards. But first, let's attempt this way, which is a common way to see this. So we're exporting all of the functions that we defined. To import these back in the server, we need to come over here and let's just define math. And we'll set this equal to require and now since it's not a common core module, we can't just say math. We have to say dot slash, and now math is available to us there. But we don't need the JS extension. So we can save that, and then let's go ahead and comment out all of these console logs. And we'll add the console log for the math underneath here. So console.log, and then we could say math.add, and we could pass in two variables, two and three. And let's go ahead and call that below with our node server. And we got hello world, of course, it's still in there. And then we got the total, five. So there is math being called. However, we don't need to call it as an object where we use dot notation. We could destructure right here. So instead of math, we could destructure and just say add and remove the math dot and save. And this should work in the same way. So if we go ahead and call the server again, and we got five once again with our hello world. Now we could go ahead and destructure and pull in the rest of the functions as well. Subtract, multiply, and divide. We have all those functions available to us now. So if we go ahead and copy down, and we'll change each one to subtract, multiply, and divide. We can save, 
go ahead and call the file once again and here are the values looks like I'll need to move this just a little bit to see all the values but we've got 5 and then 2 minus 3 is minus 1 2 times 3 is 6 and 2 divided by 3 is essentially 2 thirds 0.66 and on. Now before we're finished with the custom module, let's go back to math and I'll show you one other way this could be done. Instead of combining all of these at the end, there we go, if I'll comment out this export here, instead of the const here with each definition, I'll just select all of those, we could change this to exports dot and then it's essentially adding each of these functions to the export. So exports.add is equal to this anonymous function, and exports.subtract is equal to this anonymous function, and so on. But this will work in the same way. So once again, if we go ahead and call the server file from Node, we've still exported all of those functions and we actually deconstructed them over here to pull them in. So you can also export in that way instead of using module exports at the bottom. Okay, with that said, we have covered quite a bit, but there's one more difference to point out that we will see down the road, and I'll just put it here under number five, and that is Node.js is missing some of the APIs that are available to vanilla JavaScript, and one notable one is Fetch. But of course, we can always pull in packages into Node, and there is a large amount of packages available through NPM for Node, so we won't miss it that much. In the next tutorial, we'll be working with files as far as reading, writing, creating, updating, deleting, all of the things that we can do with files, and we'll be using the File System Common Core module for that. Hey, thank you so much for giving this video a like if it helped you get started with Node.js. Also, thank you for watching and subscribing because you're helping my channel grow. Have a great day and let's write more code together very soon.